Okay, so now that you've tried a multiplication problem on your own, let's go ahead and review the division operation. So here we go again, doing our mental movie as I read and annotate. In one year, Melinda's parents spend $2,640.90 on cable and internet service. If they spend the same amount each month, what is the resulting monthly change in the family's income? Okay, so the first time I read it, I see that they are spending a certain amount of money. And I know that that word spending means negative, so I'm just going to make that mental note really quickly so that we can keep that in mind as we begin to solve this problem. They then spend the same amount each month. And I'm circling that because after I read the question, they want to know the monthly change in the family's income. So I know that if they pay the same amount each month, that also is going to be important information to begin problem solving. Okay, so now we need to draw out our picture. We have Melinda's parents. They spent a lot of money. We know that spending money is negative. So I'm just going to write that in big red letters, right? When you're in debt, it's usually in red. And they're spending the same amount each month. Okay. So I know that this is our total. And I need to break it up per month. So how many months are there in a year? There are 12, right? So I'm just going to make that note. 12 months equals one year. So I'm going to draw another tape diagram and break it into 12 boxes. Three, four, five, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so my boxes aren't the same size. <laughs> oh well, but at least there are 12 of them, right? From January all the way to December. So I know that there is the exact same amount that they spend every month because that's what the problem is telling us. So one month isn't actually more than the other. We just need to group it evenly. So how can I break up this total amount to see how much each month, each month's bill is going to be? What operation means to group or break apart a total into even amounts? You guessed it, division. So how many months are there in a year again? 12. So that means I am going to divide, oops, not a highlighter, $2,640.90 into 12 pieces or 12 months. So I'm putting my seats and I'm putting my decimals straight up. I know 12 goes into two zero times. 12 goes into 26 two times. Bring down the four, two, zero. Bring down the zero. Do not forget 12 goes into zero, zero times. So we have to put that up at the top. That's one of our most frequent mistakes that I notice is that we forget to put that zero. So 12 goes into nine zero times, 12 goes into 90, I want to say eight times. So let's check up oh, 96 is too big. Let's go one less 84. And so 90 minus 84 after we borrow is a six. Let's bring down the zero one more time. 12 goes into 65 times even. And the reason I'm continuing is because I always go to the thousands place, right? The third number behind the decimal point so that I can use that to round. So our answer is 220.075. Okay, but what are we talking about in this problem? Well, since we're talking about money, I know that the money only goes to the hundredths place. So this five is helping us round. And since it's a five, I know this seven is going to round up to an eight. So what does this number mean? Well, this is the actual monthly change in dollars in the family's income. So since they're spending, it should still be negative, right? They're still spending that amount every month. So my complete sentence is the monthly change is negative $220.08. And I also know that it's negative, not just because they're spending money, but also if I look at my tic-tac-toe chart, right, just to double check and say I wasn't quite sure, we divided a negative number by a positive number. So here's a negative and a positive. So we should have a negative answer as our sign. Awesome. So let's go to the rules because I want you to write these in your notes. The rules for dividing rational numbers are, again, the same as when we're dividing integers, right? Just because they have fractions and decimals does not change the rule. 
So let's write this in our notes. First, you're going to divide the absolute values of the two rational numbers. In other words, the numbers without the signs. You're going to divide like normal. And then if the two numbers, the dividend and the divisor, have the same sign, the quotient is positive. So if the two numbers have the same sign, their answer is positive. If the two numbers have opposite signs, their quotient or their answer is negative. So just like in the multiplication video, we have our tic-tac-toe chart, and we know that when we're dividing two positive numbers together, we have a positive answer. Well, the same is also true when we have two negatives, we have a positive answer. Let's look at when we have a positive and a negative, we get a negative answer, and then when we divide a negative and a positive, we also get a negative answer. So that is why our tic-tac-toe chart is not just for adding, but also for our multiplication and our division rules so that we can review what sign goes on our answer at the end. Let's go ahead and try one on our own. 